Hey guys, welcome back to another Open Legend 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create an auto aim system which works in both third person and first person. So, what's going to look like is this so we can see we have AIs roaming around. If I hold right click, I'm going to be aiming and it's going to auto aim to just follow the closest AI towards us. So, it's going to snap between the closest one, not just one individual. And you can see this works in first person as well. So, it's going to be following the closest AI to us. So if we get one which is closer, you can see that it snaps like that. And now the scope that I have on the gun is something I did in a previous episode, so don't worry if you don't have that. But this is what we're going to cre be creating today. So I'll show you how to do this now. So our first step is going to be to open up our character blueprint. So for me, I'm going to be using the Anim Starter Pack one, just so that I have all the different animations in there for a first person shooter or just for a shooter. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But I'm going to be using that, so just open up your character blueprint but this will work in any character as well. I'm just using this for the animations. So once you've loaded that up, the first thing I wanna set up is actually being able to aim. So we can actually ADS or aim down sights. So for me, what I'm gonna do is go to edit, project settings, and then I'm gonna go down to input here and create a new action mapping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit plus action mapping and I'm gonna call this one ADS or aim or anything that you like. So actually I might just call this aim as if we're in third person, that just sounds better. So I'm calling this one aim and I'm going to set this one to be right mouse button since we're doing an action mapping you can do right mouse button as well as a console trigger or anything like that and you can also use this to set up key bindings and don't worry if you don't have any of these other ones like crouching and leaning these are just stuff I did in previous tutorials so once you've done that we can close that straight away and back in the event graph here what we can do is we can right click and we can just search for what we've just made so I called that aim so we can get the aim action mapping there off of pressed I'm just going to set a boolean so if I hit the plus variable down the bottom left here and call this one is aiming question mark and leave that as a boolean so it's a true or false compile and leave the default value as false and off of pressed I'm going to set that to be true so tick it and then off of released I'm going to set it to be false so when we are holding down right mouse button we're going to be aiming and you can have this as a toggle instead by just coming off of pressed and getting a flip flop and then B goes in there instead of released so that is then how you toggle it but the way we had it before is how you hold and I want this to be a hold instead of a toggle. So then we compile that and that is that part of the code done. Now we just need to go into our animation blueprint. So again I'm using the one from this animation pack. So if you just open up your animation blueprint here, what we're going to do is go straight over to the event graph. Then in here what we're going to do is we're going to find where we are casting to our character. So our mine is here, cast to character and I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to get is aiming. So get the is aiming variable that we made earlier. And then what we're going to do is just right click that, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this one is aiming. So this just allows us to be using this boolean in here as well. And I'm going to put that off of the sequence up there, like so. And then if we go back to the anim graph, double click on our state machine to open it up. And I'm just going to be having this off of idle as I'm not going to worry too much about setting up all of the animations. But it's the exact same way, you just put in all the animations where you need them. So I'm going to go into idle here, and then what it is, is play idle rifle hip there. But I want it to also be rifle iron sights here. So what I'm going to do is disconnect that and I'm going to right click and blend poses by bool. Plug the return value into the result there. The true pose is going to be our aiming and our false pose is going to be our hip. So our hip aiming like so. The active bool is obviously going to be our is aiming here. So we get is aiming, plug into active value there. And what this basically means if is aiming equals true, then it's going to be playing the aiming one and if it is false, then it's going to be playing the hip one. And you can change the blend time between them, but I'm just going to leave that as 0.1. And that is our animation graph set up. So we can close that. And then if we hit play to test, what we can see is if we hold right mouse, right mouse button, we're going to be aiming like so. And so that works perfectly. And this works in first person as well. And then if we go back into our character blueprint here, what we're going to do is we're going to come down underneath this, right click and get event tick. So if we get event tick like so, and what we're going to do is hold down B, left click, get a branch, plug that in there. And the condition of this is going to be if we want the player to be able to auto aim. So hit a new variable there. So plus variable and I'm going to call this auto aim on question mark. And then plug that into the condition there. And so this just means that you can change this boolean on whether you want the player to have auto aim or not. So obviously if they do have it on, we're going to come out of true, false, nothing. So out of true, we're going to hold down B, left click and get another branch plug that into there and this condition is going to be our is aiming boolean that we made earlier. So now if they have auto aim on and they are aiming 
we want to then do the auto aim. So then out of this, we're going to hold down O and left click to get a do once. So this doesn't spam fire it off too much as it's off event tick. And we'll use the reset later on. Out of completed, what we're going to do is come out of that and get all actors of class. So this is going to get all of our enemy AI. So I already have the AI set up, but if you don't, it's very simple. You just duplicate your character basically. And in here, you just put this code in here. And this is just going to be a random roam. So the AI is just moving about randomly. So I have different videos on that if you would like more in depth on that. So then for the actor class, what I'm going to do is just get my AI. So like I say, this is going to get all of the enemy AI. Out actors, I'm just going to get a copy like so. And then out actors here, I'm going to go into a for each loop. So for each loop, like so, the execution, going to the execution of the get all actors of class like that. For the array element of this, what I want to do is get the distance from the player. So I want to be doing this so I can see which is the closest AI to the player as I want to then aim on that one. So of the array element, what I'm going to do is get distance to. So get distance to there and take that out of the target and put it into the other actor as the target itself. So it's how far away the player is from that AI. And then out of the return value of that, I'm going to go into a float is less than a float. And the bottom value, I'm going to right click promote to variable and set this one to be called closest actor, like so. So basically, if the AI which is checking is closer than the current closest actor, it's then going to set that one as the current aim. So I'm going to compile and set this to a default value. I'll set it to something big like a thousand, just so that it can then straight away go to the first actor that it sees. But you can set this to be the max distance you want it to be. So if it is further than a thousand, it's not going to lock onto any AI above that distance. So you can set this to 500. Although I wouldn't recommend setting it too low as 500 units probably isn't as far as you think it is. So then what I'm going to do is this return value here is going to go into a branch. So put that branch in there and that execution is going to go into the loop body of the for loop. So essentially what it's going to do is for every single element in this loop, which is every single AI, it's going to check the distance from that AI to the player. And if this AI is closer than the previous AI or closer than the current closest, it's going to go into this branch. So essentially the first one will always be closest. And if the one after that is closer, it's going to come into this branch. And so then obviously out of the true of this branch, we want to set that actor to be the closest actor. So we're going to go into set closest actor, go into the return value of that. So it's going to get the distance from that actor and that is going to then be set as the closest actor. So this distance is now the new distance for the closest actor. And then we also want to set the array for this. So the array index, so we know which AI it was. So if we just right click on array index, promote a variable and call this closest actor index. So we know which one it is and just plug that in after closest actor like so. So now what this is doing is if the AI is the closest one, it's going to set the new distance and set the array index as well. So then what we want to be able to do with this is actually set the player's rotation to be facing that. So I have completed for this for each loop here. What I'm going to do is come down and go into a sequence to so get a sequence from that like so. But then zero is going to go out and go into set actor rotation. So set actor rotation like so. And this is going to be target of self. So we're setting the rotation of the player. And the new rotation of this is essentially going to be so we are facing the AI. So to do that, what we're going to do is come out of the get all actors of class again come out of the out actors and we're going to get a copy. So get a copy like that with the integer, so a rate index as our closest actor index like that. So we are going to be getting the AI that is closest to us. Out of that, so out of that get, what we want to do is then get actor location. So get actor location like that. So we're getting the location of the closest AI to us. And then we're also above that going to get actor location again, with this one obviously being target of self. So it's the player's location Actually, I'm just going to move all this down a little bit to give us some space. So we're getting the location of the AI and the player. Out of the get actor location for the player, what we're going to do is find look at rotation. So find look at rotation, the start being the player, the target being the AI. If I just move this out a bit further, find look at rotation, we're going to go into R interp2. That's not going to be the current, that's going to be the target. The current is going to be get actor rotation obviously for the player like so. And then the return value of that R into up two is going to be the new rotation of the set actor rotation. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the current location of the closest actor and it's also going to get our location of the player and it's going to find the rotation between the two. So the rotation from the player's location and the AI's location and it's going to smoothly transition 
between the R rotation and that new rotation that we want to get and set the rotation of our actor like so. And so at the moment this R in type 2 isn't actually doing anything as it's not smoothly transitioning between. So what we want to do is the delta time, we want to just come in and plug that into the delta seconds of the event tick. And so that is going to be basically the timing for the tick, so how fast the player's game is running at. And the in type speed is how fast it's going to do this. So I'm going to set mine to a value of 5, but you can change that to be whatever you like. But this is essentially how we're going to be rotating the player and auto-aiming at the closest AI. So it's going to be getting the closest AI's location, finding the rotation between our location and theirs, and then setting our rotation so we are facing the AI. So that does work, however it's only setting the closest act location once, meaning that if another one does get closer, if it isn't closer than the other AI was before, it's not going to change. So what we need to do is be setting this closest actor value here every tick. So what we're going to do to do that is come out of this sequence here, out of then one, we're just going to come down here and we're going to set the closest actor float like so. And what we're going to do to do that is come out of the get all actor class again, get a copy again with the exact same way so the integer is the closest actor index, come out of that and we're going to get distance to, so get distance to, once again the target itself, other actor goes in there, and the return value of that is going to be setting the closest actor like so. So now every tick what it's going to be doing is setting the distance between the current closest AI and the player so that way if another AI gets closer it will update this. So this is updating all the time meaning that a new one can be set. And then the final step in here is just to reset this do once. So we get another pin of the sequence so add new pin, go out of then to plug that into the reset like so. So what this means is that we'll only fire off this code again once it has gone through each and every AI. So what I'm going to do is just double click on these nodes to reroute them just to make them a little bit more organized so it looks a bit nicer as well. Obviously you don't need to do this, this is just so it looks a bit nicer and it's easier to look at and easier to understand. So I think that's going to be good for the moment as it's just a little bit easier. So this is going to be working, however there's one small thing, this only works for third person at the moment. If we're in first person it's not going to be working. So there's a very simple fix to do this. What we're going to do is we're just going to minimize this and we need to create a new player controller. So what we're going to do is just right click here, go to blueprint class, open up the all classes drop down menu there and we're just going to search for player controller like so, select it, press select and I'm just going to call this one FPS PC for FPS player controller. But you can name this whatever you like. We're going to open that up straight away and up in the top right here we have player camera manager class. We're going to go from non to player camera manager compile, save, and close that. And then back in this event graph here, after the set actor rotation, all we want to do is get a branch. So hold on B, left click, and get a branch. The condition of this is going to be is FPP, or is first person, or is first person perspective, anything like that, and plug that in as the condition like so. I will set that in a minute. Then underneath this, we're going to right click and get player controller. So get player controller like so. Return value of that, we're going to set control rotation. So what this is going to be doing is setting the rotation of the camera as well but we only want to do that if we're in first person because otherwise we won't be able to move the camera. So that works like that. New rotation is obviously the return value of this R into up to like so. And now to be able to set this here what I'm going to do is just go to the code where I have third person to first person. Again if you don't have this I have another video on that if you want but it's essentially this code here and what I'm going to do is set this boolean here of is first person like so, set it to true there as it is first person and set it to false there as it isn't. And now this should be working, so this should be our code done for auto aim in third person and first person. So now if we compile, save, minimize this just to test it, I've already got some AI in there, I don't want to add too much as too many AIs can lag out the game a bit, but obviously you can add more dependent on your system and everything like so. But we can see what this looks like now. So if I hold down the right mouse button, I'm going to be aiming. And as you can see, it isn't actually aiming, it isn't actually auto aiming on any AI yet. So let's see why that didn't work. And the reason is this here. We didn't actually enable auto aim. So what it's going to do is just come out false of this as we need to set the default value of auto aim on to be true. So if we select it, tick that, compile, this should now work. So if we test this again, we can see that if we hold right mouse button, we're aiming and it's going to be auto-aiming on the closest AI to us. So as you can see, it's perfectly working like that. 
is going to be aiming on the closest one. And if we go into first person, this is still going to be working perfectly as well. It's going to auto aim onto the first and closest AI to us. So this is working great. And if you think that's too snappy for you, you can change this. This will be this R interp down here. You change the interp speed. So obviously the higher the number, the faster. So if we set it down to two, this is going to be a little bit slower. So the transition is going to be a bit more smooth like that. Although obviously the downside of this is it might be lagging behind the AI a little bit as it moves towards it. So if we find another one, as you can see, it is slowly moving towards it, but you might prefer that. So obviously change that interp speed there to get it for different speeds and smoother transitions. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've created an auto aim system which works in both third person and first person perspective and it will auto aim onto the closest AI or the closest enemy actor towards us. And as you can see, this works great. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.